Hey guys, so I'm going to be helping you out a little bit with your vocabulary for your story that you're doing in class. So I'm going to be reviewing the vocabulary to help you have a better understanding for when you're reading the story. So you'll have a little bit more of a background knowledge to understand the context that it's being used in. So here, I had to like put myself a little bit over on this side of the screen. So your first word for this new story is presence. Presence. So now over here, it says presence. Wildlife photographers, which is this man down here on the ground, have to be careful. So they have to be very careful watching what they're doing, that their presence doesn't scare away animals. So presence is to have a presence is to be present in a place or a thing. So when we look at this picture, we see the photographer here on the ground with the camera, but then we see the wildlife animal that he's taking a picture of. But he has to be careful because if he makes a sudden move or a sound or startles them in any way, he's going to scare the wildlife and they're just gonna go everywhere. So another example of the word presence is the presence of the entire family. So this whole family that's sitting down at the table made the reunion wonderful. So all of this whole family does not live together. So it was a family reunion. So that means that people were coming from all over the place to come to this family dinner as a reunion. Now your next word is going to be outfitted, outfitted. So up here it says outfitted. This woman is outfitted or equipped with a glove to protect her from the owl's talons. That means like his fingernails pretty much. They are very sharp. So she has to wear like a special glove. So we wear gloves when it's very cold outside. So she's wearing a glove to protect her hand and her arm from the owl um, talons hurting her. So if something is outfitted, it has been provided with special equipment. So you're equipped with something. Another example of that would be firefighters are outfitted with special equipment to fight fires. So they can't just go into a fire wearing their everyday clothes because believe it or not, your clothes, certain material will cause you to burn faster than others. So they have to wear special material as you see in the picture to protect them from the fire. So they have to be outfitted with special equipment. Now, the next one is procedure, procedure. Now, the veterinarian explained the procedure and said that the cat would be fine. So he is explaining to the little girl what he did for the cat to make her feel better. But there's also another example of procedure. It depends on the context that is being used in what you're reading. So procedure, a procedure is a certain way to do something. Now, lately we've been hearing procedures, how we have to follow by wearing a mask all the time or how we have to stay away from people like six feet away. So that's another procedure. So such as a medical operation or guidelines that need to be followed, an official way of doing something. So an example would be a procedure that students do in their classroom is to raise their hand when they have a question or answering a question. So that's another way of saying a class role. It's just a fancier term, procedure. Now our next word is dwarfed, dwarfed. Now this baby kangaroo is dwarfed by the larger mother kangaroo. So we have a mother kangaroo and we have a baby kangaroo. The mother is obviously larger, the baby is smaller. So something that has been dwarfed has been shortened or made to appear smaller by something else. So when we look at the kangaroo picture, we see that the baby definitely does look smaller than its mother. So it's made smaller by comparison. So putting it together, seeing how they're the same or how they're different technically. So an example would be he felt dwarfed as he stood near the skyscrapers. So looking at that picture is a guy standing there. He's 
one second. I don't know why it keeps constantly doing this. So we have a guy, he's standing there and he's looking up at skyscrapers. Now, obviously the skyscrapers are big and in comparison, he's dwarfed, he's smaller. Now the next word is snug, snug. Now snug, this means it is important for an animal's collar to be snug, but not too tight that it is uncomfortable. So if you look at my watch, it's snug on my wrist. So it's not going to be able to come off. Now snug, it's something snug is tight and close fitting. So another example would be a car seat, not a car seat, I'm sorry. A car seat belt will feel snug if it is on correctly. So that means you won't be able to move too much because it's protecting you while you're in the car and you're driving or your mom or dad or whomever you're in the car with is driving. So when you wear that seat belt, it makes you snug. The next word is perch, perch. Now eagles and many other birds roost high on a perch. So sitting on like a branch or something to see prey, so animals that they want, or to avoid predators, so staying away from other animals that could possibly hurt them. So perch, a perch is a place where an animal sits or rests and is usually high and narrow. So it's high and it's narrow. It's not wide, it's narrow. So a spot above ground for resting or sitting. Now, here's another example of seeing how, it's, how perch is used. So the bird sat on his perch in his cage to rest. So that bird in the example is sitting in his cage on his perch. He's not like the eagle in the picture who's sitting on a branch perched and looking for prey or predators. He's just relaxing and taking a rest. Now, this next word is called, is transferred, transferred. Now, in the picture here below where I am on the uh, screen, so right here, this baby alligator will be transferred or moved to another area when it grows larger. So maybe it's in a smaller place Till it gets really big and it no longer fits there so they need to transfer it somewhere else. So something transferred has been moved from one place to another. So that little baby alligator was in a different environment but then he needed to go to another environment that was bigger so they had to he had to be transferred there. It's also passed from one place to another or something is passed from one thing to another. Another example would be the eagles fly the food up to the nest and tear off small bits of meat before it is transferred to open beaks of their young. So we see the eagle here in the picture and we see the babies. They're taking off pieces of meat, pieces of food and putting it into the bird's mouth because the birds are too little. They can't use their wings yet to fly away. So they need the mom or the dad, whomever, to come and transfer food to them. Now, this next one is calculate. Now, you might have heard calculate used in math. This is one of those words that you are going to hear. I'm sorry, this is one of the words that is used in different ways. So it has multiple meanings. That's what I was looking for. So calculate. To calculate a cheetah's speed, so how fast or slow they go, measure the time it takes to cover a certain distance. So in that picture, a cheetah does go very fast. So to calculate the speed, you have to measure the time it takes over a certain distance, so how far they ran. So to calculate is to determine the amount or number of something. To figure, to compute. Now, another example of this would be, it is important for a family to calculate the cost of vacation before they take it. Now, this is important because you can't go on vacation if you don't have enough money to go on vacation because you have to think, I need to stay somewhere. You might need a car. You're going to have to buy food. Um, 
if you go to a certain place and you want to go to the attractions there, like Disney World, you're going to need money for entry fees or to just walk around in the park. Now I put sentence frames up here. So at the beginning, you're going to see that it has blank. It is important to calculate the cost of a vacation because, or you can put it in the negative and say, no, it is not important to calculate the cost of vacation because. So when you're saying it back to me, you can tell me why you think it is important or not important to calculate the cost. Now, I just told you that it's important, but some people might think it's not important because they have a lot of money and they don't really have to worry about that so they can just go. But majority of people need to calculate how much it is before they go on vacation to see if they can afford to go there. Now the next word is enthusiastic. Enthusiastic. Now, enthusiastic. This dog is quite enthusiastic about chasing and catching flying discs. So in other words, a Frisbee. To be enthusiastic is to show great enjoyment or interest or approval of something. So showing a high or excited interest like, yeah. So another example would be in this picture I posted, the students were enthusiastic about answering the questions. So all of them are raising their hand because they all knew the answer and they were excited and they wanted to tell what it was. Or maybe the teacher asked them a question about what they did over the weekend and they all did something super exciting and raised their hand. So they are very enthusiastic about responding to their teacher. Now, this word is beaming beaming. So looking at this little girl, this girl is beaming over the news that her family is going to adopt the puppy. So look how cute that puppy is. It's an English bulldog. I have one too. Her name's Penelope and they are really cute when they're that little. So she's beaming and I did the same thing when I got my dog. I was like, yes, you get really excited. So this little girl is beaming over the puppy. She's so happy. She has a big smile on her face. Now, beaming is when someone is beaming, they're smiling brightly with pleasure and approval. So the little girl, she's smiling, she's really big smile. So smiling radiantly. Another example would be with this little boy in the picture, he was beaming after the graduation ceremony. So when you graduate, you feel really excited. You're beaming. You just did a hard job. So you might graduate from kindergarten high school, college, you're going to be beaming because what you just completed was a very, very hard task. And that's the end of all of those slides. But before I end this, I'm going to go back to the beginning and just say the words going through the pictures. Presence, outfitted, procedure, dwarfed, snug, perch, transferred, calculate, enthusiastic, beaming, and that's it. So I'm going to be posting something else in the classroom for you to look at. It's going to be for cause and effect to help you understand it a little bit more because it could be a little bit difficult. If you have any questions, you can always email and ask me, and I will talk to you guys very soon. Bye.